Hey everyone, Symbiote here, and welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. Um, this is part one, and I'm here with Kenny. Hello. And um, some of you may have already seen part one. This is our second part one, <laughs> because um, basically I like, you know, the, the, the bots that YouTube uses to determine if something has like copyrighted material in it, they like detected the cutscene because you're supposed to talk through the cutscenes and since I'm new at this I didn't really know so I didn't get a strike or anything everything's fine but all the same we're just re-recording it and I'm gonna go from there so yeah this we, doesn't affect any of the future parts that you've seen though yeah, no, we're they're, gonna they're just the go same. through the intro so we're making a new game and we're gonna choose female and we're gonna enter the character name We shouldn't really need to go through all the options. <laughs> no, we don't have yeah. to. Yeah. The character's made. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, basically we'll go through the, the like different stuff we're choosing though and all of that. Because, you know, some of you may not right, have. Right, yeah. Okay, now it's like detecting this. Is it because you moved your mouse? Might be. We'll have to see. <laughs> we may have an issue. So I'm going with the Sorcerer. It's a class I like to play. Um, it starts out at level 3. It starts out with, like, I'm not going to get as much freedom if, as if I were to go with, like, the Pyromancer, which is a class that starts off at level 1, allowing you to, uh, uh, like, a greater degree of customization. Choose where you put your stats. It mm -hmm. doesn't really matter in this because it's only, like, two stat points that you... Yeah, it's have. it's very close. Some, some of the classes start out higher level than mm -hmm. even that. Like, I think one of them is, like, level 7 or something. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's that's where you have the difficulties. So gift, we're gonna choose. Um, you have it says goddess's blessing, uh, divine holy water fully restores restores HP and status uh, status. Jeez, but you can only use that once. Yeah. Right? yeah, so it's worth. It's not that worthwhile to have. Yeah, Bl uh, black fire bomb explodes upon impact when thrown. More deadly than STD bomb. Standard bomb. That's what that is. Um, Twin Humanities, a tiny sprite called Humanity, sometimes found on carcasses. Um, humanity is actually the, the... It's an important commodity. One of the currencies, yeah. Yeah, like, um, Humanity and Souls are actually the currency of this game. And we, uh, we're gonna... It's one of those things we're sort of revealing slowly, um, as to why that is, but we do go into it, like, in greater detail later on, so... You know, for now, we'll just say that's just how people pay for things. You know, how these things transfer from one person to another. Who Does anybody actually Well, know? that's souls as well. Yeah, Humanities souls can and, bring you back from yeah, the undead. And that's true, yeah. Humanity brings you back from undead and all of that. Um, and, of course, I'm just a little, like, bleh, because we already recorded this once, and I can't remember what I already said. Yeah. Um, binoculars used to peer at faraway sites. Pendant trinket, no effect, but fond memories comfort travelers. That doesn't do anything, right? Uh, if you talk... No, actually, no, that does not do anything. Um, the designers at one point were saying, Oh, no one has still found what the pendant does. Keep looking. But uh, it turned out it does nothing. It's just to trick the players. That is an epic troll. Okay, master key opens any basic lock. Initial equip for thief. So what's cool about it, like, if I were to make a thief, I wouldn't have to choose the master key. I could choose something else. And still have the master key, but I'm going to be choosing the master key. Um, Tiny Beings Ring, special tribal ring, HP recovers slowly while equipped. Which is actually mistranslated, unfortunately. What it does is it gives you a small HP boost, um, but it's really not that big. And you'll find other other rings to wear later on. Um, if, it, if it did what it said, that'd be a great item, but it doesn't. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> um, old Witch's Ring... Hang on a second, I'm like adjusting my, my chair. Gift from a witch, ancient ring with no obvious effect. This one, um, you can find it in-game too. Um, it just lets you talk to a person that you normally can't talk to in-game. Yep. So we're gonna go with the master key. Physique, um, I think we made Helia Slim. Um, face is, yeah, commoner. We don't really need to do a bunch, because uh, it's the same... 
is the same character mm -hmm. later on. And the hair otherwise is like green, but we'll just go purple that I usually like. And that's actually satisfactory right now. Um, because like, uh, Hellia has a greater degree of customization, but you get to see her face and stuff later, you can mm -hmm. see. Uh, and of course it doesn't end up really looking like the alien in my LP. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to stop here, and I'm going to cut this out. Okay. <laughs> There's a little bit there I'm going to cut out, but we just skipped it. There are lots of ways you can go on YouTube and see that cutscene. Are you going to have a link to it? You think, um, yeah, I will, I will link to one. Um, but I'm not super comfortable having it on here again, because this is going to be on similar interests. Um, my regular channel is called Sims 3 Symbiote. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to be moving this LP over to similar interests, and it's a fledgling channel, we don't want any, any marks, any issues, yeah. and, yeah, I don't want any issues on my main channel, and Betsy's Five Avengers certainly doesn't want any issues with her AdSense or her channel, so we're just going to err on the side of caution <laughs> until I get better at all of this YouTube stuff. <laughs> As you can see, we're in a place called, it's, it's basically called the Undead Asylum. It's in the north, and what she was just mentioning is that all the undead are basically gathered up and brought here or imprisoned some other way mm -hmm. in order to keep them from causing trouble. Um, and yeah, this is going to be a kind of a thing during cutscenes. We're just going to keep talking because we just can't afford to have any issues. Now, if you notice, right now my character's undead, unlike what you saw in the character creation. The character creation. Um, so, you know, there's that. And, uh, you know, basically these are what the undead look like. They don't have eyes, really, in a traditional sense, but they can... Oh, good, that is working. Let's see. And that works. Okay. Okay. Um, we had some issues before where we just, like, stop working on my computer and things like that. So we got the dungeon cell key. This is the dungeon. This is what we look like. Um, basically, she's got a nice roomy cell. It was nice of them. And we're going to be <laughs> opening this up and heading on out. Now, I'm not online, and these er or these messages are just sort of like a tutorial thing. Yeah. Um, the story behind these me tutorial messages, um, that guy who dropped the corpse with a key, um, he actually apparently wrote these messages for you to learn how to play the game. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> And then oh. we have a friend in here. Over there. That's one of the bosses that we'll meet later on, but here's a sneak preview. Yep, and uh, every time, like, initially, when Kenny played, when um, when Will played, he's he's one of our other friends. He may actually end up being, like, in one of the videos in the future. Who knows? But um, when he played, when I played, none of us ever actually noticed that guy <laughs> at first. We heard him, but we never really... Like, oh, where is that? ...noticed him, yeah. <laughs> never looked to our right. <laughs> so... Yep, we're a little uh, singularly minded when it comes <laughs> to getting through this place. And um, yeah. yeah, this is pretty much the tutorial level of the game. Oh, did I miss the door? I always do this. It's <laughs> directly to the right. So yeah, if I were online, there would be more of these messages left by other players. Mm -hmm. I, however, am not online, um, which will explain later. Well, basically, what's... okay. Right now, we just have two options, first and foremost, while we're here. One is leave, one is attune magic. I only have one spell, so I'm not going to attune magic, but I have three spell slots. Um, attunement basically raises the number of spell slots you have, and one of the first things I do is actually try to start heading towards having 19 attunement, because that gives me five to work with early on. So we'll be working on that later. And some spells cost two slots, too, mm -hmm. so... And the thing about being online is that um, it's, well, it's really obnoxious <laughs> because people, if you are human, which you have to do for certain things, and this door does not open from this side, if you're human, um, people can invade your game. Yeah. And it's like a PvP thing. And when you die, you lose your humanity, you lose your souls, and you can go back and get them, but you can't become human again without spending another humanity. Right. And it's very upsetting. So I just don't usually do it. 
Okay, so but you gonna... also can't summon help from other players if you're online, yeah, which so. is important for some boss fights. For some of them, yeah. All you right. don't need to summon We're help, gonna... but it's always easier. Ah, I jumped. Okay, is the it... reason that she's running this way is oh, we didn't show the demon through the window this time. Oh, uh, there's sorry. what happened in that room. There was a monster that jumped down from the ceiling, and you started to fight it. Um, you don't have any good weapons at this point, so you really you can beat it, but it would take forever. Um, you get a special weapon if you do. Um, but if you out in the courtyard where the bonfire was, if you looked up in a window, you could see him waiting for you. Helps if I like get my craft together. <laughs> All right, so now I've got a shield. This guy can't hurt me. Well, he can. <laughs> he can't hurt me. He can, but <laughs> can't hurt my feelings. All right. Yeah, that's right. I'm blocking your crap. We're just gonna let him run right ahead. There's your dagger. Add dagger. Change equipment. And we don't need that straight sword hilt anymore. It's broken. It's useless. Later on, you can use a hilt and upgrade it and then get a special weapon, but I've never done that. Plus, you can actually get more of them from yeah. these dudes. And these are kind of like the base enemy. We'll be meeting them throughout the game. Oh god, there are so many of them. And like, a lot of the common enemies that you see multiple times, they, um, here I'll show you. If you go this way, there's really nothing. Um, except there's an item we'll be coming back for later. Which is there. Yeah. Can't get it. There's nothing down there. Yeah, we do come back to the asylum later. Um, but a lot of these enemies, the common ones, when you see them again later, they do end up um, getting a little tiny bit stronger, like proportionate to where you are in the game. And whoop! <laughs> and that's one of the things. There are some monsters who lay traps for you. Like, that rolling ball is because a monster pushed it down at you. And if you look and see, here's our friend who dropped down the key. And unfortunately, like I said, just so we don't have any crap, I'm just going to keep talking. Uh, but what I was saying is the, the enemies, while they are proportionate to you sort of in strength as they, they get stronger, you go on, they also um, become, um, what is it, they, they I don't give know you more you're... souls oh, yeah, yeah. As, as you go yeah. on. Kind of doesn't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> and an unfortunate thing is that like they ask questions, so I kind of have to pay attention to what's being. <laughs> yeah, said you, on screen. you really can't just dash through some conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's one uh, entity you meet later that asks these really sort of backwards, <laughs> circumlocutive questions that are really really annoying. So. So there's our healing item in this game. Um, we'll have that, and we'll be able to upgrade it throughout the game. Um, you just refill it at bonfires and drink it. Essentially. Yep. You're welcome, dude. Okay, so that guy, um, the original plan for the game apparently was to have him kind of meet you here and throughout the game show up, as w show up throughout the game and uh, just help you at first, but then... There's a branch in the story where you can choose to do one thing or the other. Mm -hmm. He ends up going the other path, and you end up fighting him. Oh, okay. But they didn't have a chance to implement that. Now, if you run down here... what? How was it that they died again? Who? Oh, he killed himself. He killed yeah. himself, yeah. Yeah. She I... just got a hundred souls. Um, that was him killing himself, so that he didn't turn undead and evil. Um, that door she just opened goes into the courtyard. He so. didn't die, so I'm just gonna... Oh, he didn't? No, I oh, okay. doubt it. Yep. Okay, now he died. Now he died. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Okay, we used the key that we got from the guy. There are more tutorial things. Mm -hmm. Just telling you, oh, look out for stuff. Use your shield. An item. There's gonna be an arrow coming my way. Um, change equipment. And now she can cast those soul arrows that she has. Yep. Oh, we're gonna save those. Now, last time I died, the first time I did the boss fight, mm -hmm. 
Hopefully this doesn't happen again. Remember the falling attack is just the normal R1. Yeah. You can get falling attacks in this game in some places, and they're really cool and they do a lot of damage. Mm hmm. These guys are obnoxious. They both die? Oh. Yep. Handy. Yep. A couple more. One more. Okay, so the way the controls work. Oh, backstab. Backstab. The way the controls work is that the left. The L1 trigger controls anything that's in my left hand. The R1 trigger, I'm not going to do it because I'll hit the wall. The R1 trigger controls my attack. R2 is a heavy attack. I, you actually, that's one of those things that unless you're a melee character, you don't usually use. Right. Um, and then L2 is... Parry. Parry, right. yeah, yeah, with your shield. So you can parry. And, it, you know, if you get parry attacks and all of that, sometimes... They're, they're very effective, but it's hard to do. It takes some practice, and you need a smaller shield like this to really do it effectively. Once you learn how to do it, it's really a great way to just deal a lot of damage. Everything's equipped properly. Okay. Do you need to heal? Um, uh, I'd hate to use a <laughs> flask for that little, but... Because I'm going to take falling damage anyway, probably. No, if you hit him, you don't. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he was like, enough! <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, yeah, there's the monster that she ran past in the so first place. I just place. got a quick attack on him for falling, and now I need to get the frig out of the way. Yep. Yeah. And I'm gonna destroy some of these <laughs> vases, because it makes it significantly easier. You'll see the green bar in the top as she's running around and rolling. <laughs> it depletes. That's her stamina. Um, if, it, if you don't have any stamina left, you really can't do anything. Um, Ideally, it's best just to break these boxes. <laughs> That's my first spell. That's a soul arrow. And you can roll. It takes stamina. Yeah. But this guy shouldn't be too tough as long as she keeps Except her distance. Except for like I said, last time I died. I did it the second time. Yeah. I was out of practice at that point. Although I had been playing a little ahead with a on your, on the PS3. character on the PS3. So. Come on, dude. Okay, and I think that's it. Yep. There we go. So, tutorial boss is defeated, <laughs> and she gets a key. Now, if I had killed him the first time I came into the room, I would have gotten his hammer. Yep. And, um, yeah, there's... Excuse me, I had the hiccups. There's no use for it whatsoever for my character. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's one of the kind of weapons that you you won't have enough strength or endurance or stamp. I figure, I forget what it is. I think it's a strength that you need. You won't have enough strength to actually use it until mm -hmm. much later on. Look how pretty that is. Yeah. We're in the north. It's cold. Chilly, chilly. I never actually Looked at stopped to look at this like stuff. Okay. The then... thing about this world, too, I kind of was just thinking about... Um, how Symbiote was saying they care, they bring the undead to here. There are still, like, some civilizations and some cities out there. We just never see them. Mm -hmm. We meet people from them, and they go, oh, we're from, uh, Isolith. Like, oh, yeah. what? Isolith, Vinheim, yeah. all of that. Um, what you just heard was there, well, you may not have heard it because we were talking, but you saw there's there was a crow. And she talks, and she tells you to give her stuff. So if you were to go into her nest and, like, drop an item, sometimes, like, it, you have to have the right item, but mm -hmm. she'll give you stuff back. Some of it's useful, some of it's not. Um, yeah, you can get some really good upgrade items by doing that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is what happens. You go up, and it just throws you right into a cutscene. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, basically, that's so, just about it. We start the next video at the bonfire, I believe, right? Yeah, okay. so we'll land and we'll wrap up. But yes, it, she, the lady said, only in a, in a generation an undead is chosen. So every, whatever's going wrong with this world, um, on occasion there's an undead, they're chosen, and they escape and they go and try to help the world somehow. Yep. We were heading to the kingdom of Lordran. Which is kind of... Coming up in a cool cutscene. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's basically, this is where 
the hub of everything that's going wrong mm -hmm. is this was the place hit first i would assume right yeah i think so yeah yeah and like basically a lot of the story is is up to you to discover the game doesn't actually tell you you have to explore and learn by reading item descriptions and things like that and it really is it, it's a role-playing experience in the way in a way because you are literally learning about the world as you go mm -hmm. the game doesn't hold your hand it's not gonna like if you if you want to just fly through and never really explore you can um just getting the basic information you need yeah. but um one thing i don't think we've mentioned this in any of the other videos we will be doing uh, very specific lore-based videos for... I don't know if we're going to do each area or what. We'll, we'll probably do one for every few areas or like a grouping of similar areas. Okay. We'll just go through and say, oh, here, here's the people that you meet here. Here's their backstory. Mm -hmm. Here's some stuff about the world. Um, hopefully they'll be informative. It's just for stuff that we don't really think of while playing the game. Yeah, it's there's so much and it's rich and varied and all that. Yeah. So the birdie just dropped me off and really quickly we'll talk to this dude because no, I don't even think we did that I last think, time. Yeah, I think you did that in the second video. Okay, so we're just gonna try to keep it exactly the same as we did <laughs> in the second video. So yeah. And if not, he's just a depressed guy. So he's sad. So yeah, this is this is where we are. This is called the Firelink Shrine. And this is pretty much uh, like our sort of headquarters, mostly where we're for the be. first part of the game. This is your hub, um, yeah, essentially. And the world is closed off in a number of ways. There are locked doors and places you can't get to because of enemies and things like that. But over time, you get rid of those barriers and everything opens up. And it is literally, it's actually, if you watch my Sim stuff, it's very much like The Sims 3. It's all interconnected. It's all loaded up at the same time. Yep. There are shortcuts to go from one place to the other once you've opened them. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, yeah, that is just about it i'd say okay. um, you got your nuts and your bolts and thank you very much for watching um please again, yeah, again <laughs> once again please remember that this is going to be moving over to similar interests that's s-i-m dash i-l-a-r space interests and um yeah that's where all of the the later videos are going to be uploaded anything that's not the sims right um except some of the sims, some some of the sims. sims. there's going to be there's sims uh there's a sims 100 baby challenge there are there's our new um our new blind cast thing that we're doing um and then uh later on uh betsy's five avengers and i are going to be doing a game called magica i'm going to be doing a quick thing on a game called proteus um, just anything that isn't actually a Sims LP will be, will be probably put on there. Some stuff will still be on my channel and her channel, but yeah. essentially. I might do something if they let me. So we'll see about that. Don't know yet. Let you. <laughs> All right. So cool. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.